Well, trade and food security was selected as the, <coughs> the theme for this edition of SOCO because it's critical to both the trade and the development agenda. Um, the issue has become central to the ongoing WTO negotiations on agricultural trade rules. Um, and it's also, trade is recognised as one of the key means of implementing or achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, especially Sustainable Development Goal 2. Well, trade affects food security in different ways. The four dimensions of, of food security, um, in terms of availability to food, can be affected by trade. Economic access can be affected through trade by the implications for employment, incomes, prices. The nutritional diversity um, of food available to consumers is also affected by trade. And the stability of each of these dimensions is affected by the extent of openness to trade. However, the way that the relationship plays out um, is very context specific. It depends on the characteristics of the country, the level of development, um, the, competitiveness of this, the, the competitiveness of the agriculture sector, the functionality of the markets, um, the degree of urbanization, but also importantly, the way that governments intervene in markets. Um, a key risk is to reduction of incentives to producers in import competing food sectors. Incentives can be undermined um, by rapid increases in imports, for example, or by depressions in prices. This reduces levels of investment by producers and also by other actors throughout the food system. Well, we, we hope that those involved in the negotiation of agricultural trade rules, for example, um, are provided with a better understanding of the implications of the decisions that, that they make in terms of the creation of trade rules um, on the potential for countries to pursue their food security objectives. But again, recognising that we need to balance um, the imperative for, for countries to pursue those, their own national objectives with the concept of doing no harm to the trading partners. What we don't want is a situation where countries um, inappropriately use trade and related pro uh, policies in a way that disrupts global markets um, and creates difficulties for other countries in, in achieving their own food security objectives. Particularly food staples, because um, in some regions we see quite a high level of volatility um, in prices, often um, driven by climatic events uh, such as droughts or heavy rainfall. And what we tend to see is governments often react um, by constraining trade to ensure that enough food is kept in the country or to ensure that prices uh, to consumers are kept at a, a reasonable level. The dif difficulty with this is that it disrupts the incentives to others engaged in food systems. So those engaged, for example, in the trade of food commodities across borders are less likely to make investments um, in, in those sort of trading initiatives. And so it, in a sense, um, by constraining trade, we also constrain the level of development of food systems. So again, this is what we're, another argument that we're trying to make. Yes, trade and trade policy have an important role, but governments need to use those policies with a view to longer term objectives of food system development and reductions in food insecurity over the longer term. 